Hello, John. This is Heather Newton, reviewing your entry in the social deduction contest, Drifting. Let's first start out looking at your uh, hero image above the fold on your shop page. I think you've done a good job of picking a cool thematic background and a good logo uh, to overlay it over here above the buy buttons. Um, I do think that the positioning of this uh, the lettering, the text here in the image is a little bit unfortunate since it's uh, really close to, it's not quite covered up by the logo, but it's really close to it and kind of competing for attention and a little bit covered up by the buy button here. I think I would move the text maybe to the upper corner or to this side somewhere instead of centered to help it not be covered by this. And I'm, I also think it's a little strange that you have one font here in the logo saying drifting and you're saying drifting again here in a different font. Um, I might just remove the word drifting and only say a bridge crew hidden, hidden identity game in the, um, in the hero image, in the background image, and maybe put it up over here so it's not competing. And I see that you have it for sale on the Game Crafter. For what feels like kind of a high price for the weight of the game and um, in a moment even though that's not really part of judging just from my own experience using the game crafter i have some thoughts about how you might be able to cut that cost down without sacrificing too much in components so um, we'll talk about that when we get down to your component list in a second here but first let's look at your cool factors I think you've done a good job here making them unique to your game and what's memorable and specific about your game. Um, no player elimination is always a good plus for people with social deduction. That's one of the common uh, complaints or objections people have. I like your headline here. Um, it is drawing me into an interesting story. and. I might add some things like some headings. So like this is the story. If I'm trying to just quickly get the point of, okay, what kind of game is this? I might want to skip the story. So then putting a heading like uh, objective or object there could be good. Um, and this uh, statement here at the bottom about the art style and um, using this game to prove that art isn't required for a good game is just out of place in my opinion in the description of why you should buy a game. It's just kind of um, drawing attention to something that's maybe a controversial topic for no reason instead of using this space to get people excited about the game and why they should definitely like it rather than um, trying to maybe defend yourself against a complaint that you're expecting people to have but really you're just you're the one who's bringing it up i i don't even think that this art is you know bland or or i don't know <laughs> um or it needs to be called out as not the best art in the contest or or not the best art on uh of, for any games on the game crafter or whatever uh i think it is eye-catching and fine and I wouldn't have even had to spend time thinking about this if you hadn't mentioned it here. So I, I think that could be removed. I don't think it's necessary. Uh, now down to your components. So I see um, that, and this, you know, may be my opinion different than other people's opinion, but personally when I choose components for a game crafter game, I really try to not have any waste. And I know that this medium square chit where uh, you have 30 of them in the game. Those, uh, let's see if we just look over at the Game Crafter. Let's look for medium, medium square chit. Mm -mm -mm -mm. It's up here. There it is. Um, it has 150. In, in a set and it costs almost $10 to get 150 and those are the only chits that you have. Um, and you also have this skinny board that is, it has, there you get four of them in one order and they cost 650. 
I think you might be able to, if you're willing to do a little bit of work to learn the custom cutout system on the Game Crafter, do, I think, let's see, medium punch out. Okay, and we have the custom medium punch out. Um, the finish size is 8 by 4.5, and um, it's only 560 plus linear inches. So, for example, like, and you get four slugs. Two of those slugs could be your skinny board, and then the other two could have the squares cut out, and, like, the linear inches would be, um, I think, that the chits that you're using are 0.75 inches on each side, so that times four... Um, times 30 plus a little bit for the laser to move around and you definitely if you do this make sure you optimize the path of the laser so it goes from one to the next cleanly instead of jumping around the sheet but uh, that probably would only be you know uh, seven dollars seven fifty max for that whole thing and then you'd be saving uh, probably almost ten dollars without doing the specific math, then you could really cut down the price of the overall product. You could also then fit it in a, uh, I believe you'd be able to fit it in a medium stout box, um, either fully printed or not, depending on, you know, how much you want to, you could save $2 from the large retail box if you don't print all the sides. And, you know, those slugs would fit in that size. And this box, I believe, is sturdier even than the large retail box. The stout box is thicker and just feels like a more um, just professionally printed product. It won't um, get too beat up if you're carrying it around in a bag or something, your, bo your bag of games. So anyway, this is kind of an uh, off topic, not specific to judging, but uh, just something to think about for continuing to sell it on the game crafter and helping more people buy it uh it just you have pretty much the same thing i think you need to adjust you might need to make your chits actually a little bit smaller to be able to fit the same number of them across since this is a bit shorter or eight inches is a bit sh shorter than the skinny board but i think you could you could put them a little bit closer together and make them just a little bit smaller and be able to fit everything plus since it is a custom cut you can make those chits any size you need them to be um, so something to consider. But anyway, oh, let's look at your box cover real quick. Um, I think, yeah, you've done a good job. I think you should maybe choose which font you want to use as your official logo. And uh, if, you, if you like this font more, I might put it on what you're using for the logo with the ship icon. But uh, I also could see adding uh, drifting the name of the game to all sides of the box so that no matter what way I put it on the shelf, I'll be able to see which game it is, remembering, remembering that easily. And yeah, I see you've put the um, player stats on the cover of the box, and I think that's a fine place to put it. I, I like sometimes to see it on the side too, but um, front is a quickly identifiable spot where I'm not hunting and pecking around to find that answer so I can tell if it'll work with my group when I'm getting ready to play a game. So then let's look at your action shots here at the bottom. I think you've uh, used the kind of shots that I want to see here. The game actually being played, pictures of the components, photographs of them is good. Um, this image, I think, would, you see, I, there's a lot of words on it, and it's moving in a carousel automatically down here. And I can't read all this before it moves, and that is frustrating for me as the a user of a website. So I this is a good image. I would either not have the words on it and just show the components laid out. So uh, I it's like a much quicker to process kind of thing. Or I would take this whole image and I would, instead of putting it in this carousel, I would embed it up here in your description um, since it's a snapshot of what's going on. Because it's not a bad image, it's just not well represented in a carousel, I would say. Now let's go over and look at your rule book. Um, your rules are not like super highly graphically designed, but I feel that you made an effort to at least, you know, get a 
get a font that you're consistently using and uh, that, you know, sh to show diagrams, show pictures of the card so it's not completely devoid of any kind of diagram or picture. And I'm getting to see what they look like. I might... Game components, okay, right. I might add a count for how many of each of these cards there are so that the person who's opening up the box can easily verify that they have uh, the right number of components. And uh, again, I want to know how many of these I'm supposed to start with. Some numbers could be added here. Um, and I also think back to the components that you have, I see you have um, you've used the square cards well because they're, those are come in decks of 24 and you have 48 cards so there's no wasted space on the sheet the printed sheet but for your for these cards the um, uh, roll and loyalty cards you have 10 of each and that makes a total of 20 with a poker deck and poker decks come in uh, eight sheets of 18 so you have this extra space that you've not it's not going to cost you any less to or it doesn't cost you any less to not use the whole last sheet you have to pay for the whole sheet so you've got uh 16 cards that you could use uh it's not going to cost you any more to use them i think that this game could be well served with some player aid cards that give reference to um, how many of things that you need to play together and what everybody's special abilities are. Uh, because as it stands now, just everybody has to memorize that as far as I can tell. And that sounds taxing because uh, it's, it's kind of, it's a lot of things and there's kind of a lot of exceptions there. Uh, oh, now you need one, then you need two, etc. And then also this... Um, the way that you describe setting up the assignment cards and everything, I would really like to see a table of, you know, which roles I should include if different numbers of people are playing, how many loyal and disloyal there are. I am not getting a clear picture of how many there even are in the first place because you didn't say it up here like are there only two disloyal cards so then that makes this completely clear two when there's more than five or one or it can be randomized like I'm very confused about this and that this is kind of a key thing about social deduction games is the balance of the size of teams uh, people want to be able to really quickly reference that I think adding a table would be great and I think it seems like you're saying you want it to be very flexible and that's interesting but uh, I would find a way to do a table that conveys that conveys the truth of the situation what is allowed and what isn't more quickly at a glance and add that to the rule book uh, Here's the cards that require one and everything like that. Um, you may want to put the how to win conditions on maybe on the player aid, but it actually you have room on the loyal and disloyal cards to put the win condition for you if this is your role on the card. I think that might be a good place to put it. And um, also real quick, I don't think that the um, the envelopes are adding a whole lot. I'm not understanding why I really need the envelope because we're going to be sitting around a table and you just need to deal one card from two different decks in a pile in front of me. So, and I, all I need to do to keep my role secret is to leave my loyalty card face down. So, uh, um, this is... I think they're about 10 cents a piece. I can't remember exactly, but you could probably save a buck there too uh, because it, that component is not adding a ton, I would I would say. So anyway, uh, that is my feedback for your entry here. It is not a finalist. Mostly um, some of the things about the rules being a little confusing and hard to read and hard to hold things in my mind like maybe if I could see 
If there was a player aid, it would make it feel a lot more approachable, and maybe it really isn't as complicated as the rules make it feel as I'm reading them, but it's just a lot to hold in my mind. Um, you do have pictures of the components, which is great, but more examples, more um, diagrams showing maybe, maybe a board setup and how cards would resolve or something like that could be helpful too. But I do think it is an interesting idea. Uh, it seems like it might be a little bit along the lines of Battlestar Galactica Light, which I think there could be a place in the market for that because a lot of people like that game, but it can be hard to fit in because it takes a long time. And this game doesn't give me the impression of taking a really long time. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching this a little bit longer video with some um, thoughts about component details, which is not, again, components are not the reason that you weren't selected uh, as a finalist. It's more the rules and thinking about which games, uh, I'm trying to bring in games to the finals that I think have a chance of winning against the whole set of finals. And it felt like we would have some um, overly tax, like it would be overly taxing for players to try and keep track of everything without, without player aids and things like that in this game. So anyway, I encourage you to keep uh, on developing this and maybe uh, push harder to sell it on the Game Crafter or get it published, whatever you choose. I wish you luck. Hey there, thanks for watching. Be sure to check the description for more information and links to helpful resources. Some links will give me a commission if you choose to buy, and I sure do appreciate the support. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.